So what we have here, back from Aircraft Accessories of Oklahoma. We received back in the mail a overhauled, rebuilt mix, fuel mixture, throttle, Y-pipe, fuel injection assembly. I'd like to include some pictures of what the old one looked like. I think there's some video, there's a video of the pipe, or this thing laying on the ground with a pink rag behind it. it it's, that's what we removed. Boy, and I can tell you what, this is a whole lot different than what we removed. That is some nice work. All new, calibrated, flow tested, sealed. Yeah, that's nice. Boy, I tell you what, it did not look like this when we sent it to him. <laughs> not at all. And so, also ordered off eBay. This is off a bird dog airplane, an army bird dog. It's a support bracket, but it's the right metal. The, the quality of steel for support that I can use in, as fixing welding. I can cut it up and use it. And I think I might be able to use it as a back brace. Uh, my intent is to use it as a brace for one of those, one of the damaged brackets as a strength, putting it on as a strength member and welding it all in as one unit. And so it doesn't break and re and repair the, the old part because you can't find it new. So it's got to be serviced. So I bought this as welding stock, so to speak, is to use as to cover and patch and then, weld in and grind and drill and machine to make the part look new again the part that's broke the part that's bad and then this is i've showed you on one of the videos there's one of the videos i have where the, the bolt and nut and washer and all this is assembly <laughs> and this thing is so wasted on the on the old one so we got a, i ordered this off uh ebay this came in Twenty two ninety five for this little bracket, but Continental wants sixty something, and I don't even know if you can get it. And I have to—I've only found one side. I need the other side. So if I can't find the other side, I have to fix the old part, and that's not a problem. It's we just weld it all in, heat it up, temper it, and then grind it down and drill it, and we'll call it good. So what also we have here from aircraft uh, accessories of Oklahoma. Sorry about that. <laughs> is I had the fuel, the mechanical fuel pump removed. I removed it actually, and it looked terrible in all kinds of ways. And again, I also have pictures of it. But there's this elbow. Well, you can still see some of it ground in there. They didn't replace that elbow. It looks like it's okay. It's borderline, but it, there's plenty of meat right there. That's not a game ender. But the one on the one that they replaced was worn almost in, down into two where a cable had ran on it. You know what? I think I'll call Ken in the fuel shop and maybe send him a picture and see if he can send me another one of these. Just don't need to take the chance. So, you, as an owner-operator, you're still responsible, even if it comes back and looks new, or they, they told you it's all good to go, doesn't leave you a responsibility to make sure that it's airworthy. As the owner operator, you're the last person standing as far as an airworthy air. Well, the pi you as pilot, PIC, pilot in command is obviously the, the last authority before you take off in the airplane. But <laughs> I'm learning a whole lot here. But there's a difference between being very mechanically inclined and being able to actually fix and learn and know exactly how this system operates 
and using the proper calibrated torque wrenches and calibrated uh, pressure gauges. And so when, when it comes time to set this all up, you get the proper fuel balance <laughs> in all its regime. You make sure that the linkages are hooked up right and they're adjusted right and everything's supposed to be operate or everything's verified it's operating as supposed to be but as a pilot and you just hired as a pilot and you got to you know and you're working for a company your job is a pilot not a mechanic so you and you got multiple you just don't have the time or the really the in-depth ability to really get into the weeds of how your plane really works and where all the little things are we all have been taught the basics and get the understanding that you know but to really know takes a lot of work and a lot of time these guys got skills i like it i don't like that because it was one of the it was one of these that were like that about 10 times worse it was just about to go through it was just it was within hours of it spraying fuel in the engine bay, in an oil-soaked engine bay, right above the exhaust pipe. Would have just, whole thing would have gone into big old flames. But literally the gouge, I wish I had a picture of it right here, it was 10 times, I mean, it was almost through into the, into the housing. So that's really only into the part that's built up to put a wrench on it. It actually contours just like nicely like the rest of the. So I'm saying you gotta. It's borderline. And is your life worth it? I mean, is that worth risking? If you got it in your hand now, to go ahead and change it. Uh, I hope they would unscrew without interference. How do you do that? I believe the threads would run into the. Uh, all right, well, we'll learn. We'll, we'll get her squared away before we put her all back together completely. But happy with this. And then uh, I've got the new diaphragm coming for the in, uh, intake manifold, the distribution block manifold on top of the engine. That's all going to, I'm going to, oh, so I, I'm going to replace that diaphragm and fix and clean up that block. I'm not having it sent in to have it overhauled because apparently it already had been done. It was up to date. It just needed the, that diaphragm and it needed to be cleaned up. So, so they say uh, the best way to clean it is Dawn detergent and an ultrasonic cleaner. And we used ultrasonic cleaners in the dive locker uh, with vinegar to get all the you know, to get the corrosion out of all our parts. Uh, from regulators and diving diving gear back in the Navy. So uh, my now my object is to find a ultrasonic cleaner and get it sent in. And I'm also, I'm a, a lot of the old parts. So this, this stuff that you see that's gold, that's cadmium plating. It's like a zinc chromate type of... It's a coating that goes on over the metal to act as a sacrifice. So it keeps it from corroding, but what happens is as corrosion tries to attack it, little pieces of that material just slough off and you can't, but after a while, after years, it wears out. It actually disappears or gets thinner. And that means the coating, the oxidiz the the corrosion coat prevention is, is, uh, breaking down and needs to be replaced. So we're also going to take old parts that we're going to fix and we're going to give them all a coating, a zinc, a zinc coating, followed by a chromate or cadmium um, coating. And then we're going to let that cure and those parts will all, will all look, generally will look in this color. And uh, learning how to, to do plating it's pretty simple actually not real complicated you just need to get have a little shop area that you might get a little messy and smell up a little bit because you're using 
hydrochloric acid and, or muriatic acid and you're using all kinds of different stuff. But it's not too bad. But anyway, that's where we're at. And on to the next job. Back to the plane. Bye.